Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the second of the semi-finals from the Warno opening tournament ran by the Simulated Divisions League. This one is going to be between Solo Wing Pixie and Karma. Today they are playing on death row and on our left in the blue we have Karma using the 79th guards tank division on the pack side and on our right in the red we have Pixie using the 3rd Armoured Division on the NATO side. So I have kept the map orientation the same way around as the previous game, just so I didn't confuse you guys, but then the colours have changed sides, so that might be a little bit confusing. And also, more than that, uh, Pact is blue and NATO is red, so that's also quite something. Regardless, um, we're going to be looking at these two titans clashing today karma had an awesome game against greyhound in the previous one so i'm hoping to see another one here today um, that was probably one of the best games so far that i've seen of warno uh, so definitely go check that out if you missed it that was karma versus greyhound um, karma winning out of course to get to the semi-final here and then pixie in his previous game he uh, did very well, very decisive victory, a very quick victory against Yuri Tanner. So managed to come on through, and we're going to be seeing these two players uh, go up against each other. Uh, Pixie, another veteran uh, from the Steel Division 2 community. Uh, so let's have a quick look at these uh, units going down. Uh, Pixie has already placed a lot of his units. So three M13 ACAVs here at the start for him with the OH-58C Scout. This, M this OH-58C Scout is quite interesting. It does come with a minigun, so... It can do some damage to infantry. I, um, I haven't had a chance to really try it myself, but I'd be curious to see if he uses that for its, that kind of role. Uh, but there's going to be a couple of military police up here with the M67 recoilless. Then he's got two mechanized rifles, which are the uh, more elite infantry with the uh, Dragon 2s. Then he's got an M1A1HA at the start, which is interesting to see with an M48A Chaparral to back that up. Then he's got two Apaches with the rocket pods that are going to be accompanying that convoy on the top side, plus the OH-58CS, which comes with those air-to-air -air helicopter or like anti-helicopter missiles. So really, really good sort of anti-air support he's got here to protect his M1A1. I could maybe do with like a couple of Stinger squads as well, but I'm not even sure that Pixie has them in his deck because he hasn't placed any down at the start. Regardless, we've got the M or military police uh, with the M67 and then the engineers there. Military police with an M67 as well on the road further down. He is going to still be relying on these command jeeps. There's one in the town at the back, and he's going to be sending one probably to Echo early on. And then one military police going to be hanging around on the bottom road uh, to prevent any fast flanks at the start. For Karma, he's going to be going for the MI8K right at the front at the start. He's going to be just probably sailing that across into Bravo just to see what zooms up there. He's got a BRM for the one top side. And then on that top side as well, he has a BMP-2 squad with the Motostrauki inside. He's got the BMP-1 with the Metis uh, Motostrauki in. And then he's got an Igla to back that up. Further down, we're going to be seeing the Motostrauki Metis in the BMP-1 with the Razvedka Heavy and an Igla. Uh, again, even further down, it's going to be the same sort of thing. Motostrauki Metis, Razvedka Heavy and Igla. And on the very bottom side, Sapariapio with the Motostrauki and the BMP, which is the BMP2, and then T80. So it seems like he's placed like BMP2s on the top and bottom. And then for the mid, he's got the, the BMP1Ps with the Motostrauki Metis, which makes sense because HGMs can cover the open ground easier, plus the uh, recon squads to help him out. He's also brought in the Mi24V here, as you can see, and that T80B uh, will give him a bit of armor presence on this bottom side. Already selling his UAZs there. At the start, it's going to give him a little bit of a refund on those points so that he can invest it into whatever he decides to bring in next. But we've got to really focus on this attack on the top side from Pixie because that is a large concentration of forces. But Karma will have spotted at least the Apaches coming in here uh, from Pixie. So he's going to have to deal with that, get the Igla into a decent position where it can hide and continue to fire at the Apaches whilst uh, remaining hidden because if it if it's in a building uh, it shouldn't be spotted too easily 
Uh, it seems as though uh, Pixie's actually gone for the centre sector early on, so for the plus three. So Pelliapio going past the Ministry of Police, so managing to get away with that. Both of them unloading though, there's going to be a little bit of engagement down there. Eagle is going to be going for the OH-58CS in the centre. Rizvitka Heavy now engaging the engineers at close range. MI-24V taking a lot of damage here, that's really bad for Karma. It does go down to the OH-58CS, usually the MI-24V is good for dealing with uh, the OH-58 because the OH-58 has so much less health, but in this case, uh, the OH-58 managed to get the jump on the MI-24V and shoots it down. That's massive. Now, the Apache is going to be engaging the MI-8K, and the Igla there too close, really, to hide from the Apaches. So as soon as it fires that one round, yes, it does damage, uh, but it's not going to uh, kill that off. Although the BMP-2 going to be helping take down one of them. Will it be able to help take down the second? Definitely doing a lot of damage there. With the rockets coming out from the Apache, though, it is going to bring down that cohesion on the um, BMP-2 and stop it from doing as much damage. Also, the M113A cab moved up there and helped destroy both of those BMPs, although the Mojstroki Meta is looking to finish off that M113A cab in reply. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, uh, the TATB moving forwards here with Karma's units, the Mojstroki and the Sapoli, uh, really finding quite a lot of ground down here, actually. Um, these com this combination seems to be working out quite well for him. The Rosvitka spotting the enemy infantry and then like the Mets is able to take out any vehicles that are uh, going up against him. But this initial push from uh, Soloing Pixie has put him in a nice position here. He's got the M1A1 already all the way up there. The Chaparral is hanging about ready to uh, shoot down any helicopters that come in to respond. Although the MI-24V already got taken out and they're very limited in supply for the 79th. Uh, the Chaparral is zooming up. Uh, probably going to be looking for the shots onto the MI8K unless uh, Karma can get that out of there. Looks like he'll be able to do so just about. So the M113 A cav going to be doing a runner, but the T80 is running it down. And goodbye M113. Yeah, nicely secured on this bottom side, but the Abrams has now come in. T80B versus the Abrams. The Abrams does have the advantage, quite a large advantage at this range uh, since the M1A1 has a 17 front armor, so it can tank the 16 penetration from the T80B quite well. Whilst the T80B also has less armor, but the Abrams has more penetration, so yeah, got to be super careful, although that RPG just missed, unfortunately. A nice RPG side shot into that M1A1 would have definitely turned things around a bit. Roger Stokey Meta is going to be trying to get the HGM off, but do get stunned. Oh, that is unfortunate for Karma there. The main gun of the Abrams managing to pin them down. And so the Abrams is going to escape, and it looks like the Metis, is it going to go down? No, it doesn't. Okay, well, that's at least something. Uh, if he can keep the squad alive, he can resupply it with his supply vehicles and uh, get it back to full strength. Uh, there is an M1A1HA moving in on this bottom side. That's currently unsupported by AA, so got to be a little bit careful there. Two Apaches, though, moving out on this bottom side. Ooh, is Pixie going for another attack? It looks like he is. A Sapari Apio that was covering the bottom flank for Karma is dead, so he's not going to see this coming. The HA oh, almost took a shot there. Igla going to be taking a shot at the Apache. Uh, looks like that eagle is not long for this world. Does manage to hit both of these with that shot. One of them taking three damage, one of them taking two damage. So that does help a little bit. Another eagle shot comes in. If you can take down these Apaches, that's going to be the, the hardest part of Pixie's play dealt with. Because in the previous game, Pixie also made a lot of work happen uh, with these Apaches. So if you can get rid of them, then, he, then Karma can kind of settle down and focus on like a more... Uh, generic game that like he had against um, Greyhound but at the moment these Apaches have, have really been doing a number on his forces although it seems as though Karma has managed to kind of stabilize on this top side there's a Purdy RPO going to be uh, jumping forwards there bumping into two mechanized rifles actually makes them take a lot of damage now they're going to be doubling up with the Mojstrauki to fight one of the mechanized rifles and just making sure that you manage the engagements so you do get those like 2v1 engagements super important you can see there um, the mechanized rifles down two men get taken out before they can jump out of the vehicle, uh, the building. And then there's one addition to Warno that I actually kind of like um, from the new mechanics is that you can't just like house hop like you used to. In Wargamer Dragon, house hopping was like a big deal um, to avoid damage and avoid bombing strikes and so on, um, which was kind of silly sometimes. 
and also in Star Division 2 you could do it to a certain degree to like jump in and out of vehicle, in and out of buildings to launch like AT weapons at tanks but in this game it kind of stops that sort of like cheesy gameplay from happening and so you've got to really like commit and make sure that you're making the right move uh, before you advance into a building but looks like uh, solo wing pixie here he's brought up a ton of military police uh, to support his tanks and they're going to be screening those as he runs forwards with all these men forwards they go abrams following up with the m113 a cabs as well making sure he has that recon in position super important but and now that, that TATP is gone on the bottom side and both of those squads, including the Metis, well, there's actually really not much to stop this push coming through here from Pixie. On the top, the T-64BV is uh, pretty good. And against all these military police up here, should be fine. Also, all of the Magistraki with the VMPs uh, should be good for pushing through this top side. You can see Pixie knows that. He's going to be backing up with his M1A1HA, getting that out of there, making sure his... Uh, important units to remain alive whilst probably using his military police to kind of sacrifice themselves so that he can get his other units out of there. That building just got utterly destroyed along with the units inside. And there we go, the BMPs finishing things off there on the bottom. It looks like the MI8K just got taken out. Was that an MI8K? Oh no, it looks like an OH got shot down. The BRDM under pressure, that's the MA8K, that's what I thought got shot. Um, the BRDM chilling at the back of the sector. Eh, not sure it's going to be able to be there for too long. Igler trying to engage with the <laughs> AKs, but that's not going to happen. Uh, and this MA8K looks like it's going to get shot down potentially by the machine guns of the M113A cab. He does have a 50 cal here that's uh, wheeling on the, the MI8K. It's only got one health left, so eventually that's going to get the last point of damage if it continues to fire uh, but all of the uh, Apaches of Solo Wing Pixie currently back here uh, they're landing and getting resupplied by the supply truck there's currently three Apaches with the rockets remaining so still quite a punch there um, they weren't actually taken down on the bottom side and there's also an AH-64 Apache on the top side now as well and that's forcing Karma to be a lot more careful and I think just in general, um, Karma doesn't really have the AA to support against these Apaches very well at the moment. He's only using Iglas, and I just don't think that he can really get away with doing that. He's got to bring in something like the OSAs. Like the OSAs are really nice for shooting down Apaches because they have 7 damage, which means the one front armor of the Apache doesn't really matter. I think pretty sure an OSA can shoot down an Apache in 2 hits. So, yeah, it's... Um, it's a shame to not see those used because they are really, really useful. But Pixie making great use of the helicopters and exploiting that lack of AA from Karma. And once we see these Apaches move up again, I'm sure that's going to be an absolute disaster for Karma. Because even without that being the case so far, things aren't looking terribly hot right now. The M1A1 did already take out... Uh, one of the BMPs here and the infantry alongside is getting mown down. The TATB there going to be coming under fire soon from the M1A1 as well. And again, the TATB just really not going to match up very well against the M1A1 Abrams, that's for sure. And now we've got the uh, Apaches coming in again. So engaging Karma's BMP2 there, going to be taking that out. If it discovers the Modestrauki, it can kill those with 30 mil. And you can just see how much uh, damage they can put out very, very quickly indeed. The Igler is getting like the occasional shot in. It looks like the Apache on the top side um, did take quite a bit of damage here. But just hasn't shot it down. And, and that's probably the main thing. You know, Pixie's done a good job of getting these back to his supply to fix them up again. And he needs to like, like do that in order to like get value out of them. But if Karma can just shoot them down first time every time, then you know he can't get the value like that out of his units. One of the Apaches did go down in the center there. Looks like the Igler managed to get the better of it. Igler also now engaging this Apache. TATB against Abrams once again. And wow, <laughs> the uh, Apache managed to catch a 30mm round into the MI8K. That got hit 
went down. It was already very low on health. Surprised to see the TATB as being the initial choice of unit for Karma. It might just be because he's under so much pressure that he can't really afford to bring in a TATU. But I feel like his use of TATUs in the previous game were very, very good for Karma. So uh, not seeing them this time around is a, a little bit disappointing so far. Um, he obviously probably still has them in his deck somewhere, but um, it hasn't really been able to justify bringing it in just yet. Uh, the BRDM has moved up here. The M67 would have killed that if it had ammo, uh, but it does not. So Karma, yeah, that's pretty obvious where that is. The F111E coming in, I think for the first time in this tournament, it's a very good cluster unit. Does quite a lot of damage to the BRDM, but the BRDM actually survives for the time being, so not taken out just yet, but every time he moves that out of cover, the military police are just spotting it again. Um, so Pat Yapio doing okay here, taking on the military police and trying to clean up things on the top side, but yeah, in general, so far, Pixie has done a ton of damage to Karma's forces and things are looking really quite bad. Um, Karma's being forced to use these command units like very like aggressively almost to try and um, secure these flags or the, the, these sectors or at least contest the sector in the center. Uh, but the main thing here is of course uh, having to deal with all these tanks. Um, Pixie ha has been using his lead to bring in more and more of these M1A ones. And now he's got two M1A18 Abrams on the bottom side, one of which just absolutely annihilated that T80. And then uh, the M1A1 up here is uh, doing work onto the reinforcing Mochisoki of BMP. And this was like a lot of points invested into these Mochisoki, and they just got taken out. Both of the BMPs went down, both of the Mochisoki squads are dead due to the Apache. And uh, yeah, it's just um, everything he's bringing in is just getting annihilated. Like again, another BMP went down there. Just great positioning here from Pixie on this in this tree line, and it's done him a lot of favors. SG24M coming in, or should I call it the Su24M before somebody gets mad? <laughs> Actually, did quite a lot of damage here to both of these M1A ones. Um, would have liked to have seen maybe a second one if he could afford it coming in at the same time because when you double strike with those cluster munitions uh, they can like wipe out these heavy tanks in, in like one run well technically two runs but if you bring them in in tandem then they will just you know kill them very very quickly indeed so another SU-24 coming in this one actually going for uh, this Abrams instead it's already low on health so this might actually finish the job if it lands correctly and yep, and there it goes. Oh, these look so cool. And that just popped off. Look at it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> the turret went flying. Uh, nicely done. Very cool. The airstrikes in this game look gorgeous. F111, E cluster coming in. That's uh, looking for the BMP2 kill there. I think it was also intended to kill the BRDM if it were in that position but obviously Pixie's already managed to find it on further down and uh, take it out here so back to the plus three in favor of Pixie he already had the 1000 point lead now he just kind of needs to secure his position he doesn't even really need to do too much he could very easily push into uh, Charlie right now because he's uh, taken out so many of those reinforcing units and if Pixie you know, realized uh, that was the case he can obviously uh, just charge forwards with everything he has especially since now he's uh, completely fixed up his m1a ones with the m35 supply uh, su24 coming in again with those cluster munitions is that going to get the job done uh, it does do damage again but it's just going to get fixed up this is why it's very very important in warno to actually kill things like in the first engagement and not let them take damage and then get resupplied because supply in this game allows you to repair units unlike in still division where if a unit got damaged on the field it would remain damaged until it uh, got killed um of just for the rest of the game so yeah super important that you do make sure that you keep your units alive but also make sure that if you're engaging an enemy unit that you you kill it and you don't let it get away with low health 
Um, so SG-24 coming in again, both players now relying on these cluster bombers. At least we get to see the airstrikes every time, and they look really, really freaking awesome. Uh, BRDM moving back into cover there, almost got taken out by the uh, mechanized rifles with those Dragon 2s. At least he kind of has an idea of where the BRDM is now, but yeah, big push coming in here for Pixie. He's uh, again screening with his military release, allowing the M1A1s to move forwards and get the shots in. Doesn't again even really need to push too aggressively so just kind of taking it easy here is happy to sit on the plus three only 500 points to go has brought in two chaparrales looks like he's going to try and aim to shoot down the su 24m clusters just has to be careful because the cluster planes are in fact uh pretty good at killing aa as well <laughs> so make sure that they are spread out when you use them and here we go again SU-24M dropping its cluster munitions and we're going to see that come down onto the M1A1 both the chaparrales, oh both of them hit and shoot down that cluster plane that's one of the tools that Karma would really need in order to bring back this game going down there oh and the AOH-58 manages to take out the MI-24V as well not again oh and that is it, Karma Gives up the game, and damn. Oh, that was brutal. Soloing Pixie winning the game with the 4,565 kills to 1,745 losses. What a decisive victory from Soloing Pixie. Very, very nicely done. I didn't expect Karma to go down so easy. Um, of course, Karma really trying his best there, but I just feel like it got to a point, uh, like a cliff edge, where Pixie just had an enormous amount of points lead across the map like having those abrams on the field and then there being like no ta to use on the opposite side makes things so difficult i would have also liked to have seen more of the metis squads being used as opposed to like the bmp twos with the uh, mojstraki bmp because the mojstraki metis can can also help deal with the abundance of armor uh, that can be brought in at the moment in the game so yeah it was unfortunate that this happened the way it did. Uh, Karma losing his MI-24V to the first OH was really hard because it meant that he didn't have the helicopter he needed to take down the Apaches quicker and therefore the Apaches got a lot of damage done on the top side. And it just, every, every single attack that Pixie made that just cascaded into a, a big advantage um, that uh, he managed to just hold on to for the rest of the game. There was no real back and forth. It was more just Pixie making plays and then like Karma getting beat by it. And um, that was, it was tough to watch, but an awesome game and a very decisive game from Pixie uh, with not too much like cheese really going on. Obviously, Apaches are very strong at the moment and a little underpriced. I say a little, very underpriced. Um, but of course, that will be changed. This is, of course, early access and uh, these players both know that going in. So, yeah. Anyway, M67s getting those BMP kills. Uh, always nice. Plays themselves off massively. Um, Strata 10M as well there. Uh, from that military police. This OH-58 CS, what an absolute champion, took down two of the MI-24Vs. The reason that this is so crazy is because not only do the MI-24Vs have more health, they also have armor. So it takes five, it takes three hits from the OH-58 CS to, to shoot one down, um, to shoot one of the MI-24s down. And it's only got four missiles. So if it misses a couple of them, it can't kill the MI-24V. Uh, the MI-24V only needs to hit like one or two to shoot down an AH, OH-58CS. So yeah, the the engagement there is like weighted so far in favor of the MI-24V, but the micro of Pixie managed to allow him to get behind one of the MI-24Vs and then uh, the second one just losing a straight up fight, which was really, really unfortunate. Uh, military police there with the M67 taking out three Iglers and a T-80B and picking off the BRDM. The Apache here coming through, taking out another Eagler. The two BMP2s on the top side. And you can see that another Apache. These rocket Apaches just absolutely ripping through the infantry there with the 30 mils and the rockets. It's just kind of hard to uh, to watch when that happens. But the M1A1 as well, just dominating, killing a T64 BV on the top side. And then like the military police killing the T-80B towards the center and M1A1 killing another T-80B. And these T-80Bs, like, I'm just not... I just don't think they're a good choice. Um, they don't really 
have a role at the moment in the game. I think they'll be useful when there's more like medium tanks and, and lighter armor. Like maybe up against like a more mechanized division, it would make more sense. Um, but up against like a heavy tank division that relies on M1A1s. Um, the T-80Bs are just like so outclassed by the M1A1s. And um, the T-80Bs also don't really have many targets if your opponent doesn't use Bradleys. Um, so you don't really get value out of the T-80Bs at all. Um, so relying on like a TATU that can kill like heavier targets and supporting them well with a lots of AA is like super important if you're going to play Pact versus NATO at the moment. Um, as making sure they have I haven't we haven't seen OSAs at all, but um, they're really strong in my opinion um, because not only are they like fast, but they have like really solid HE and they fire very quickly as well. Um, so they can take down aircraft very well, but we haven't seen them at all. Like Iglers are fine. Um, making sure you have those is, is super important as well but having something like the, that's the equivalent to a chaparral in the in the osa is very important um either way the uh, t80b there did clean up a couple of m113s but you can see that the tanks here aren't really getting any significant kills the t80b killing mi mi like military police this one killing loads of trucks this one killing some recon units at the start yeah it's nothing important and um yeah, most of the kills really just came down to kills onto Apaches. That was most of what uh, Karma's kills were, apart from all of the military police, which are there to be expendable anyway. So, yeah, great use of uh, the NATO deck there by Pixie, and uh, congratulations to him. He is going to be moving on to the final to fight off against Steven Siegel, and Karma's going to be dropping down to the third place final to play off against Derek. So, two more games to look forward to. Well, actually, more than that, because the final is best of three. So, there we go. Uh, but that is it. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Congratulations to Pixie. Commiserations to Karma. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah,